JJ, the CPA here. Hope you're doing well. So with PPP2, the qualifications include a 25% decrease in your gross receipts from a quarter in 2020 compared to the same quarter in 2019. I'm going to walk through a real simple calculation that you can do to help you figure that out. A couple of quick things to note. This round of PPP2 is for 300 or less employers that have 300 or less employees. It's up to $2 million. Uh, you had to have used PPP1, not forgiven, but you need to have used it up. And as it relates to those that have not been in business all of 19, there's special provisions on what you compare to. You do have to have been in business on February 15th of 2020. If you're a seasonal employer, there are also some special provisions of what you're doing a comparison to, to help ensure that if you qualify, you do. There is going to be a necessity test, and many of us are going to probably rely on the necessity test in part due to this calculation of your receipts being down by at least 25%. But there's further going to be a necessity test of, but do you need it now? Maybe your gross was down in a quarter, but do you need it now? So that's vague. What we do want to be paying attention to is that when the SBA comes out with the PPP2 application that we're paying attention to what that really is. It does appear that to apply this time, it will be very little documentation, if any, given to the bank on the front side. But rest assured, having to prove not only the necessity part, but also that your gross receipts were down in the comparison of 2020 to 2019 in any, win, any uh, given quarter, and my understanding as well is that you're going to need to provide the receipts. Now, I know that we're looking at the forgiveness of PPP1 and we're like, well, I mean, under 150 grand, you know, they kind of have put that in a position where it's pretty easy peasy as well, which I'll have another video on that. I digress just to say this that we're getting ready to go through isn't the only qualifier for PPP. Too. So what I've got here uh, is basically uh, what I wanted to put together. And if you go to my community post, uh, you'll see that I put a picture of this up as well. And that's on all my social media. I just put a picture up of this. But So how do we know? Well, in a nutshell, if you just take the receipts for the quarter in 2019, times 75% and then compare that to whatever the gross receipts are in 2020. Well, if it's less than that figure, the 75% mark, then you know you've had a decrease of at least a 25% figure. So I did a calculation here. There's the four quarters for 2019. Uh, and then I just simply took it times 75%. Why 75% JJ? Well, if uh, 2019 quarter one, the gross receipts was $10,000, then we know that for this business to qualify, first quarter 2020 would need to have gone down by at least 25%. Well, it means that there would need to be at least a $2,500 reduction, right? You'd take 10,000 times 25% and you'd go, well, the gross receipts would have to go down by that amount. Well, to make it easier, we're just doing the inverse. So we're just taking the gross receipts times 75% and then we simply compare that. That's our threshold here, okay? The threshold meaning, well, is uh, first quarter 2020, is it under 7,500? No, well, shoot, don't qualify based on that one. But you can tell here that for second and third quarter, the person or business would qualify based on either quarter. Uh, of course, they wouldn't qualify based on fourth. So you just need to qualify for one of these quarters. And then when you go to apply, you'll know that you've met the gross receipts test. It doesn't appear to be a gross profit in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it will be interesting to see 
how it plays out for those that are on accrual, whether you're on cash, which 99% of businesses are on cash basis. There's going to be some interesting provisions that I'll be um, wanting to work through with some clients because on the gross receipts test, um, does it matter when it was earned or was it just based on when it's collected? If it's cash basis, it's just when it was collected, period. But we know there's going to be a lot of businesses that, you know, second quarter may have not been that down because they were collecting still what they did in first quarter. But it might be third quarter that's down. Do you do a split of the gross receipts? Well, I don't think we want to get too far ahead of ourselves or try and manipulate the numbers. But nonetheless, be sure that you are uh, paying close attention to the gross receipts test in the finite details if you find that you're not qualifying. And then the one thing too, I'm glad you made it to here because when you're talking about the gross receipts, you're only including the income for that business. So you would not be including unemployment income that doesn't go on schedule C for starters, wouldn't go on any of the business returns. So if you got unemployment, Yes, that's income, it's taxable income, but it is not included in the gross receipts test because the gross receipts test is only the gross receipts from that specific business. If you got PPP, round one, well, that's not gross income by law, but 100%, that is not considered business income. You will not include PPP round one in your gross receipts in this regard, whether you got them forgiven or not, it has no bearing. I'm not talking about the tax aspect. I'm talking about on this gross receipts test. If you got the EIDL grant, if you got the EIDL, if you got other grants, city or state or local or county, those are not part of the gross receipts test. Those are grants. Those are loans. Whether exempt from income or not, those are not from the business. This is meant to be, in essence, your gross receipts literally from the activity of your business. All right. Hey, gosh, I wish I would remember to ask at the beginning, but if you've made it to here and you're not a subscriber, do me a favor and do it. I'm a CPA, as you know. I just love to see the numbers go up on my subscription numbers. It lets me know that I'm putting out good videos. Uh, I don't get paid any extra based on the number of subscribers. I just feel loved by it. So for those that are subscribing, turn on the notifications. Hey, and then by the way, in the body of this, I've got a link. I've got four different seminars coming up, depending on when you're watching this. And uh, each one of these seminars are only going to be provided um, on one date. And two of them are only one time. And I've got over 46,000 subscribers. Well, thank you for that but I don't have that many spots open on a Zoom. So at the end of the day, it's a deep dive. The seminars are different from my videos because they're driven by a PowerPoint that I'm writing that you get a copy of. And I have worksheets and calculations and any forms that are uh, needed or required. And so it's more thorough. Um, they're typically many hours and then each one does include a one hour live q a on the zoom so check it out my website's jjthecpa.com i have a seminars page all right hey thanks for listening and uh, hopefully this helped and then don't you ever forget you've never met a cpa quite like me all right hey have a great one